Jim Jordan, I just, you know, going back to basic basics here, putting the politics yeah. aside, we have a law, 212F. That law has been endorsed right. and confirmed by the Supreme Court. And I still don't know why yep. we need another piece of legislation that actually would codify even higher targets than anybody wants. Yeah. Help me out here. Yeah. No, you're exactly right. But Joe Biden, he's not going to fix a problem that he purposefully, intentionally created. They want this. It's obvious that by the fact that on day one, they said no more wall, no more remain in Mexico policy while we evaluate your asylum claims if you're a migrant trying to get in the country. And once you get here, you will be released. So that incentivized the whole world to come. And that's exactly what's happened. And as I always point out, we're on pace in the Biden administration. In four years of the Biden presidency, we're on pace to get to 12 million. This is the magnitude of this problem. 12 million is the equivalent of the entire population of Ohio, and we're the seventh largest state. So, mm. yeah, there's no real desire to fix it. They put together some, some, quote, bipartisan bill that's only going to exacerbate the problem and not address it because, again, I think they intentionally want this to happen. Why, I don't know. But it's certainly an intentional decision that they made. Well, it just, you know, it's so uh, This uh, Chris Murphy from Connecticut, who I think is up for re-election this year, but whatever. So he comes out and says, we're not going to close the border. The whole point is to close the border. Why would you say that if you're like, the, he was the leading Democratic negotiator. That's point number yeah. one. Po point number two, Jim Jordan, is where did these numbers come from? Why are these target levels so high? And I don't know exactly, 5,000, 8,000, 8,500, seven yeah. days in a row, whatever. The point is, they're too darn high. They're higher than anything, you know, that uh, w was left when Trump left office back in 2020. Yeah. Where did these numbers come from? I think out of the thin blue, and it looks like they came from someone who wanted to confuse the American people. As you point out, they're too high. They're confusing. They don't really make any sense on why you would have the metrics that they have uh, unless you wanted to continue this problem, which, again, is where I, where I come back to. I think the solution is real simple. Joe Biden's not going to fix a problem that he purposely created. So the only answer is for the Congress. The government to have control of the money says, okay, no money, one sentence, no money can be used to process or release into the country any new migrants. So we simply say, time out. We're no longer going to let people come into the country who are seeking asylum. You're not getting in. Just say eight and a half million on pace to get to 12 million. That's probably enough for one administration. Let's say time out and then let the American people decide how we want to deal with this in November when we have President Trump, who actually had control of our border against President Biden, let the country decide. What Congress should do is say, on the funding bill, no money can be used. Here's another one we should add to the funding bill. No money can be used, no American tax dollars can be used to tear down barrier that Texas taxpayers have put up. Mm. You talk about stupid, Larry, we're going to have American taxpayers pay to take down what Texas taxpayers have put up. That's the Biden administration's policy. That's as dumb as can be as well. So those two amendments, I think, make sense. Let's make sure they're on the spending bills that have to pass in March. Well, one thing that's so interesting about uh, Greg Abbott's uh, crusade, apparently there was an article in the New York Post this morning Apparently, the spots where they put up the barbed wire or the chicken wire or whatever wire it's called, um, I don't know about such things, but it used to be a barbed wire. But apparently that stopped the illegals uh, where the barbed wire was put up, which kind of reminds me of why we wanted the wall in the first place. If you have a barrier at, at very, I know we, neither of us can hardly keep a straight face. If you have a barrier, yeah. at the very minimum, it slows things down and it just might stop it. But Biden's got his troops in there trying to take the barbed wire down. This stuff is working. But why not leave it alone? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and why not finish the why not finish the wall that was working ah. too? But again, not Nothing in this administration, your, your monologue was great. I got to hear it. Not, nothing in this administration makes sense. We went from a secure border to no border, safe streets to record crime, $2 gas to $4 gas, stable prices to record inflation. We went from President Trump, who projected strength from the Oval Office, we had respect around the world, to Joe Biden, which is all weakness from the Oval Office. And then, of course, maybe the most important, these federal agencies have been turned against the American people, weaponized against we the people. That's what this campaign is about. Who are you going to pick? Who are you going to pick? I think the American people have common sense. They're going to they're going to say we want Trump back in the White House. Well, the, you know, the bigger theme, I'm, I'm glad you heard it. It's just that I, I hate to say this, but America's broken. 
or, or let me put it differently. There are so many things in America that seem broken today during these Biden yeah. years. Now, some of this started before Biden, but he's made it worse. And then there's stuff like the border that he's created. But the Middle East, he's made it worse. The lawlessness, nobody supports the cops anymore. What's going on? I'm sure Harvard University was a left-wing haven before this Claudine Gay, but the fact is it all became, you know, it all uh, nurtured yeah. and matured and became visible under Biden. Uh, it, People want to fix what's broken. They love the country. You love it. I love it. It's why we work at it. Fix America. America's yeah. broke, and it's got to be fixed. And by the way, to your other point, I know a guy who used to be a builder in New York who's pretty good at fixing things, Jim Jordan. I'm going to sure give you the is. last word on that one. He was a good builder, no. fixer-upper. And he sure is. And just take the area of foreign policy. I, I love the question when Pompeo was asked a year and a half ago when Russia went into Ukraine, he was asked, would this happen in a Trump administration? Secretary Pompeo gave the best answer. He goes, the short answer is I don't know, but I do know this. It didn't happen in a Trump administration. Hamas and Hezbollah didn't attack uh, Israel in a Trump administration. And it was all laid there because he, he started with the embassy in Jerusalem. That laid the groundwork for the Abraham Accords. And that's why we had so much more stability in the world, because you had a guy who knew how to lead, who knew how to make a tough decision, and actually did what he told the American people he was going to do when he ran for the job and they made him their commander in chief. And that's the guy we need back in there. Just 30 seconds. I can't help myself. What are you going to do to my friend Fannie Willis down there in Hotlanta, Georgia? I'm kind of worried about her. We, looks, looks like she might lose her, her position, her prosecution, her law case. I don't know. Jim Jordan, give us 30 seconds on Fannie Willis. Well, we just subpoenaed her for documents and communications because she got $14.6 million of federal tax money. And there's a whistleblower down there that says they were misusing that money. So we want to know, and this is all in, in, in addition to the almost $700,000 she paid Nathan Wade for 26 months of work. The guy who was going to the White House, going to the January 6th committee, going to the Justice Department, looking for ways to prosecute President Trump. So she's got a lot of explaining to do, and we subpoenaed documents just last Friday. All right, we'll leave it there. Jim Jordan, best of the best. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it very much. All yeah, right. Thanks, Eric.